welcome to this online lecture of modern physics and let's quickly review what we have discussed so far we have been i have, i have been saying that this paper has a theme of how any scientific theory or any scientific topic progresses with experiment and theory hand in hand so when there was search for atomic structure thomson was the first one to propose the model and this is theoretical model as proposed by thomson and what was the next step here there was that we needed some experiment to test whether the model is correct or not whether it represents uh, the nature or the atom correctly or not and therefore this was the experimentation which is this experiment scattering experiment and which proved that thomson's atomic model cannot be correct so to account for the experimental observations this again led to a different theory rutherford proposed its model and what happened next was there was this evidences from experimental physics from these spectral observations that even rutherford's model cannot be correct as it is proposed by rutherford and it needed further modification and therefore next step was bohr's atomic model so we will discuss bohr's atomic model now which is the topic of this lecture we will discuss these two postulates first postulate first and second then we will derive two relations we will derive relation for energy levels of electron electrons in the atom and we will derive relation for radius of electron when it is present in the atom we will then consider the third postulate this third postulate postulate is important because it gives us the relation which is obeyed by hydrogen spectral lines which we have uh, seen in previous lecture and then uh, bohr's atomic model is also not uh, not exactly correct there are flaws to bohr's atomic model as well though it uh, to very good accuracy it can predict the the spectral lines it is not correct it is not the atoms are still not as simple as presented by rutherford's atomic model but and we will see some of the drawbacks which has which are there in bohr's atomic model okay so let's begin by considering the first uh, postulate so bohr assume a very similar first postulate just like uh, rutherford's atomic model that there is a nucleus to atom which contains all the mass and almost uh, almost all the mass and all the positive charge and electron revolve about that nucleus due to electrostatic force between the nucleus which is positively charged and the electron which is negatively charged and required centripetal force for motion of the electron in circular or orbit is given by this electrostatic attraction quickly let me quickly write down the relation there what we know is centripetal force has the relation of mv square by r here what is m it is mass of electron remember that v is mass or sorry it is velocity of the electron which when it revolves about the nucleus and r is the di distance between the nucleus and the electron and this is centripetal force so on left hand side i have written the centripetal force which is equal to it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 z e square by r right so this is the electrostatic force of attraction what is z here z is atomic number so we here are considering an atom which is not necessarily hydrogen it could be any atom and whatever is the atom then we know that net charge of the nucleus of that atom is going to be plus z into e where e is electronic charge and since there are z number of protons in the nucleus the net charge on the in the nucleus on the nucleus is going to be z into e and electron has charge which is minus e and therefore this is the relation that we get i'm not considering the direction here we are just worried about the magnitude so here when i write this equation left hand side is equal to right hand side i'm considering only the magnitudes of the forces centripetal force and electrostatic force now we can rearrange this equation r r gets cancelled and i can rearrange this equation to write m v square is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 z e square by r so we will leave this relation here itself because when we derive 
energy and uh, radius of the of the atom according to bohr's postulate bohr's uh, model we will need it okay so this is the first postulate so the second postulate second uh, bohr's second postulate is not something that we can assume from our daily experiences which assumes the quantization of angular momentum so what it says is basically this any electron in the atom has angular momentum which can be equal to n h by 2 pi n here is any integer 1 2 3 3 and so on or rather it is only it is any positive integer and h is called as what is h h is planck's constant and what is uh, it equal to what is the value never mention a physical quantity without its unit what is unit it is joule so we are writing this in si units so this is planck's constant and what second postulate says is that electron in the atom cannot have any angular momentum but it has angular momentum which is satisfied by this relation if this relation is not satisfied by angular momentum of the electron then that uh, electron or that that angular momentum is not there in the atom so if we have electron in the atom which is revolving about the nucleus then it always satisfies this relation so it puts constraint on what angular momentum the electron can have and why was this postulate required was it was required to account for the flaw of radiating atom in case of rutherford's atomic model we said that this is positively charged nucleus and electron is revol revolving about it with in this circular orbit with some velocity and since this motion is now accelerated it emits electromagnetic radiations and it in the process it will uh, lose its energy this electron will lose its energy it will follow a spiral path and eventually fall into the nucleus to account for this observation or to to account for this flaw of rutherford's atomic model planck assumed this postulate of quantization of angular momentum where do, where does this postulate comes from we will get to that point let's first consider what is l l is angular moment angular momentum for any body let me erase this suppose i have it is what we have is a very similar thing suppose this is the center about which the electron is revolving which is the nucleus and this is electron which moves say with velocity v or with speed v and its velocity continuously changes so this is the linear uh, velocity of the electron which when it revolves at any given instance of time its magnitude is v and we want to write down relation for angular momentum so angular momentum is equal to i into moment of inertia tell in this case what is i in terms of mass of electron and this radius yes it is mr square remember that this m is mass of electron though i am not uh, writing that subscript e here here when i write m we are talking about mass of the electron and omega i can write v by r and therefore this l will become mr square into v by r and that is is equal to this cancel i get m v r and therefore according to this postulate electron when they are present in orbit it is always equal to the relation which is satisfies which which is satisfied is m v r is equal to n h by 2 pi where n assumes integer values positive integer values right so this was the second postulate no from classical point of view there is no explanation to this particular point that uh, according to this postulate when this condition is satisfied by angular momentum of the electron when it is present in atom then uh, it is non radiating atom it is called as stationary orbitals where stationary orbitals now don't radiate they do not radiate and therefore the the atom will be stable so when this particular relation is satisfied by electron then it is non radiating atom and it will stay there in that orbital forever and this comes from now we uh, we know that this is the fact from a theory which we call as quantum mechanics at that time it was quite new only in 1900 had planck proposed uh, a postulate where he said that uh, when when electromagnetic radiations are emitted they are always emitted in packets and h nu 
So if we have electromagnetic waves with frequency nu, then it is always emitted with this relation uh, where n is equal to any integer. So this this theory was just in its uh, developmental stages at that time, and assume uh, and Planck uh, he took ideas from the theory and used it to propose this second postulate or to propose the stationary orbit so that the flaw Rutherford's atomic model has that electrons will eventually fall into new into the nucleus can be removed. Now there is no explanation from classical physics which can which can uh, explain this particular postulate and in fact that is the reason it is called as postulate it is assumed that this is the case and then you have to take or you have to test that postulate by using experiments and as it turns out that after so many years after almost 120 years it turns out that these kind of stationary orbits actually exist all the experimentation that we have done, done so far says that these kind of uh, stationary orbitals assume these kind of stationary states are present in any quantum system and uh, even if there is no cl explanation from classical physics to it we now believe that this should be true now there is one hint from where we can get this particular postulate how we can do it is in this particular fashion uh, at that time i said that planck proposed the uh, the concept that electromagnetic radiations are emitted in packets and that particular relation is satisfied from the same idea now de, Bro de Broglie proposed his own hypothesis any particle which we consider particle is also it al also behaves as a as a wave and that wave which is associated with any moving particle is called as matter wave and according to de Broglie's hypothesis that matter waves has wavelength which is given by this relation lambda is equal to h by p where h is the Planck's constant same constant universal constant that we considered 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule seconds and p is momentum of the object whenever we have a particle which is moving with this particular momentum then there is a matter wave associated with that particle it is called it is termed as matter wave and its wavelength is given by this relation lambda is equal to h by p so now we are we are trying to uh, obtain or we are trying to give a reason to why this particular relation is satisfied by the electrons when it is present in this stationary orbits and for that what we will do is we will use this concept of de broglie's hypothesis that if electron is moving in the orbit then it has some momentum which is given by uh, p then it has it behaves as a wave now suppose this is the orbit this circle that i have that you see here that dotted circle that you see here suppose is the orbit of the electron which is moving about the nucleus i keep saying this this is not the simple picture the atoms are not actually that simple as assumed by these pictures or as assumed by these models they are more complicated than that we cannot associate a fixed position for the electron at any given instance of time we know that after 120 years there is behavior of that electron is governed by quantum mechanics and therefore it is not as simple as assumed by Bohr's atomic model or uh, Rutherford's atomic model before that but it at least gives us a very correct explanation to spectral lines, spectral observations, and therefore we, to some extent, use that theory still. It is not completely completely correct. You have to accept this theory by knowing that it is not correct. So this is the electronic orbit about with about which the electron is moving, and this orbit, if you unfold that circle and get a straight line i am drawing it here okay and now since electrons are moving in that orbit with some velocity where this is the length of the orbit then according to de broglie's hypothesis these electrons are now behaving as waves and if the the electron is present in the stationary orbit then what it is said that these electro these these matter waves they form a standing wave pattern in the orbit this wavelength of the electron or wavelength of these standing waves are such that if you multiply it by an integer 
so n lambda is always equal to l where l is the length of the uh, of the stretch over v is of the stretch where these waves are present so if this length is equal to l then standing waves require that n lambda is equal to l so this is this we are getting from the concept of standing waves or by using de broglie's hypothesis now what what is lambda in this case let me write it here l is therefore where remember l i used initially when i used that l symbol it was for angular momentum now this l is this length over which these electron waves are present or these matter waves of the electron are present r then what is l in terms of r of the orbit which is equal to 2 pi r which is equal to n into lambda is given by this de broglie's hypothesis which is h by p and now i can write this p as mv and if i rearrange this equation what i get is mvr is equal to n h by 2 pi bohr's atomic model shall we now derive the relation for energy of the electrons in the atom where do i start for this someone said total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy let's start with this relation let's try to get the relation for kinetic energy first let's start from the beginning let's not jump to the final equation so that everyone is with us make, let's make sure that everyone is with us so now to get the kinetic energy i start with this relation mv square is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 z e square by r where have i obtained this relation we have obtained this relation from the first postulate from this relation so i am using this relation which we have derived from the first postulate by assuming the first postulate and i am using that so i'll start derivation for total energy from that point and therefore kinetic energy is equal to 1 by 8 pi epsilon 0 z e square by r but this is exactly the same relation that we derived for uh, getting the total energy of rutherford's atomic model but at that time what was condition on r in in case of rutherford's atomic model is there any condition on r is there a specific condition which r should satisfy so that electron can be present in that uh, orbital there is no such condition but now when it comes to bohr's atomic model there is the condition which should be satisfied by an orbital so that it is stationary orbital so that we don't have a radiating or unstable atom and that condition is mv square or mvr is equal to n h by 2 pi so what i'll do now is i'll use r i'll rearrange this equation and will get that condition on r which is equal to n h by mv so any orbital or any orbit along which the electron is present should satisfy this condition for its radius and then only that that orbit is non radiating orbit or that orbit is stationary orbit which which will not make the electron to radiate and lose its energy eventually falling into the nucleus so we will use now this relation for r into this relation so that we can get the kinetic energy so what is kinetic energy or let me write that kinetic energy as half mv square now which is equal to 1 by 8 pi epsilon 0 remember this is half mv square so this is equal to z e square by r is n h by 2 pi into mv now uh, there is there are sample this v will get cancelled let's do the algebra this pi will get cancelled and this will become 1 by 4 and similarly this is 1 by 2 no let's not uh, cancel this 1 by 2 let's keep it let's not cancel it let's let's keep it as it is so this is what we get right am i leaving something out and this also so what is v equal to v is equal to z e square divided by 2 epsilon 0 n h right and now kinetic energy is 
half m v square, which is equal to half m. So and v square is z e square divided by two epsilon zero n h whole square. So instead of this v here, I am replacing that with right hand side of this relation, and what I get is m z square e to the power four divided by this is squared so this will become 2 square which is 4 and therefore it will become 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square which is equal to m z square e to the power 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square now next step is to obtain the potential energy potential energy is what uh, what we have here is a nucleus and there is electron which is revolving about that nucleus with some orbit of radius r. So the distance between these two charged particle is equal to r. And when we have this situation, when we have two charged particle with charge q1 and q2, which are separated by a distance r, then the potential energy or electrostatic potential energy to be more, more precise is given by this relation minus or plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 into q2 divided by r so in this case for our case now q1 is equal to z e which is charge of nucleus q2 is equal to minus which is charge of the electron and therefore this relation is minus now 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 z e square by r now what should be the next step electron cannot assume any value for R, according to Bohr's atomic model, it should satisfy this particular condition, which is NH by 2 pi mv. So let's use that NH by 2 pi mv. This is the relation that R should satisfy. And therefore, potential energy is minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 z e square by R is NH into 2 pi mv. Right? So this pi will get cancelled this is 1 by 2 and potential energy is equal to minus z e square or m into z e square divided by 2 epsilon 0 n h and into v but v we have obtained it here in terms of constant remember in this case all these this right hand side is a constant for that particular orbital n assumes the value of 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So we will now use this right hand side of velocity into this relation, into this relation, so that we can obtain the potential energy. So this therefore is equal to minus m z e square divided by 2 epsilon 0 n h into what is v? V is z e square by 2 epsilon 0 n h z e square divided by 2 epsilon 0 n h and therefore potential energy turns out to be equal to minus m z square e to the power 4 divided by 4 epsilon 0 square n square h square so this is potential energy we op we have obtained kinetic here energy here already which is which now you can see they are same kinetic energy is has the same relationship. The difference is that it is not uh, negative, it is positive. Kinetic energy has to be positive. And instead of 1 by 4, kinetic energy has 1 by 8. 4 is equal to potential or kinetic energy plus potential energy. E is equal to kinetic energy is what? Z or M. What is it? M. M z square e to the power 4 divided by 4 epsilon 0 square n square h square am i correct is it the same relation no it is 1 by 8 isn't it plus relation for energy of the electron in the atom which is m z square e to the power 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square so this is an important relationship with a minus sign this relation is with a minus sign remember that 
so what we have now is relation for total energy n assumes integer values remember so what bohr's at bohr's second postulate or according to bohr's atomic model now not all electrons cannot have any arbitrary value of the energy but it will have only those energies which are satisfied by this relation n can be 1 n can be 2 n can be 3 and in that way you can find out different values for the energy and when elect energy of the electron is same as which is um, energy of the electron is satisfied this satisfied by this relation then only those energy levels are present in atom and therefore what we have is a discrete energies for atomic uh, for atoms electrons in the atoms right total energy for hydrogen this z will be 1 and what we will have is e is equal to minus m e to the power 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square so this is for hydrogen atom so the message is not all energies are possible in a, inside atom only or il, not all energies are possible for electrons in a, uh, hydrogen atom only those energy levels are possible or only those energies are possible which are satisfied by this relation okay so this is the first uh, this is important uh, result that we have here by assuming bohr's atomic model which can now explain why we have discrete spectrum when light is coming from atoms is everyone uh, with me on this are there any doubts any questions let's derive this relation for radius of the atomic orbital where we will start we will start with this relation we where we wrote a relation for r we have done it yes here r is equal to nh by 2 pi mv which we have obtained from the second postulate the postulate of stationary orbit that mvr should satisfy that particular relation so r is equal to nh by 2 pi mv let's start from that point so let's begin here 2 pi mv and now v is where is it where did i get that v here let me put this v here into this relations to get r as nh divided by 2 pi m and v is z e square into 2 epsilon 0 n h now this 2 will get cancelled and what we get for radius is n square or epsilon 0 n square h square upon z into pi m e square so this is radius of atomic orbital when it is non radiating when it is stationary radi uh, when it is stationary orbit then only these radius radii are possible where n remember is it assumes positive integer values so it is not all radi radii are possible when electron is revolving about the revolving inside the atom only these radius are possible first important relation that we derived was for velocity or magnitude of velocity or speed of the electron it, when it revolves ab about the nucleus it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 z e square by n h bar where n assumes integer values we just saw that this is the velocity so then we can we derived another important relation which is for the energy of the electron this is total energy of the electron always keep in mind so we are now not talking about potential energy and kinetic energy separately we are here discussing the total energy of the electron when it is in the atom it is bound to the nucleus so this turns out to be equal to m z square e to the power 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square where n is again the same as it can assume any integer values and when we have these particular energies these satisfy the second postulate and therefore electrons are even if they are accelerated even if they are in accelerated motion for some reason they don't radiate and 
uh, therefore the atom is stable and non radiating this is the assumption as by bohr's atomic model just keep that in mind actually now we cannot say that electrons revolve about the nucleus because as we know now the nature is much more complicated you cannot uh, associate or you cannot assign a particular value to position of the electron at any given instance of time that is the difficulty that we always face we know that and therefore we have to talk about probabilities uh, when when it comes to actual picture of atom this is according to bohr's atomic model then we derive the another relation which is for the radius so this is the radius which is epsilon 0 n square h square divided by z into pi m e square this is another relation that we derive so the, for, when electron is in this orbit this per particular orbit then the energy of the electron is this and when this happens since the second postulate is satisfied since the second uh, or relation of the second postulate is satisfied the electron is in stationary orbits so they can stay there forever and what we know from look by looking at these uh, relations is this as far as n doesn't assume these integer values those values of energies cannot be present in atom electron will have only those energies for which these n's are now constants and therefore energies or electrons in the atoms cannot assume any arbitrary value of energy or it cannot assume any arbitrary value of the radius or it cannot assume any arbitrary value of the speed but only those values of these parameters or these quantities are allowed which satisfies these relations and this n for any value of n it is called as state of the atom or when when we say that n is equal to the 2 that means it is in the second or rather it is in when n is equal to 2 you say that it is in that particular energy state so when i write e1 that means i have to plug in value of n as 1 and what we get is this relation m z square e to the power 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n square is 1 because we are considering n to be equal to 1 into h square so this is the smallest value uh, that electron can have and therefore it is sometimes referred to as the ground state because for any given value of n we are saying that it is state of the atom it is called as ground state when n is equal to 2 what is e2 it is now minus m or let me write it in like this what will change here is this n square we have considered n is considered to be equal to 1 and therefore n square is equal to 1 for e1 now can someone tell me what is e2 in terms of e1 it is right it is minus e1 by 4 don't forget that negative sign because electron is bound to the nucleus whenever we have a bound bound system the energy total energy is negative because potential energy is more than kinetic energy in numbers but it is negative and therefore this is the relation similarly e3 will be what it is now minus e1 by 9 right one more thing to note here is that we are dividing e2 by 4 sorry e1 by 4 when we obtain e2 so if we consider pure numbers magnitude of e2 is less than magnitude of e1 but these these are negative numbers you have to keep that in mind therefore when e2 magnitude of e2 is greater than magnitude of e1 that means e2 is less negative as compared to e1 and therefore e2 is actually greater than e1 similarly if i consider e4 it is greater than e1 because e4 is what is e4 in terms of e1 minus e1 upon 16 but e4 is now less negative as compared to e1 and therefore e1 or e 4 is greater than E1. So let me write it like this. Em is greater than En when M is greater than M. Right? So just keep this in mind. Let's continue. Let's go to the third postulate. Now, how spectral lines emerges? This is explained by this third postulate in uh, Bohr's atomic model. What it does is let me now represent these energies by using these lines. So when I write it like this, it is E1 
which means energy is given by the relation the same relation but n is equal to 1 then e this is suppose e2 which we just saw is e1 by sorry there there cannot be negative sign no one see e1 is negative so it is simply plus it is not minus if i consider magnitude then that is uh, that minus sign will be there because e1 itself is negative right so this is e1 by 4 similarly then we will get oh, i should have started drawing it from the bottom so this is e1 then we have e2 which is equal to e1 by 4 then we have e3 which is equal to e1 by 16 and so in this way the energies of uh, the atoms are at energies of the electrons in atoms are given where e1 is what we just wrote, i just wrote it in previous slide now according to this third postulate bohr's third postulate so when i draw this picture when i draw a dot here above any line e1 e2 e3 what it depicts is it depicts it depicts an atom which has energy which is given by e2 let's focus on hydrogen atom now so this picture indicates that we i have one hydrogen atom which has or whose electron has energy which is equal to e2 i won't say that its energy of the electron is e2 it's simply energy of the atom so whenever i have atom in state e2 then it is depicted like this similarly if i depict if i consider this then the atom has energy which is e1 which is ground state and if i draw a dot here that means i have atom with, with energy e3 hydrogen atom remember now i am not worrying about any atom let's focus on hydrogen atom because that is the atom for which bohr's atomic model works the best for as you go on increasing the atomic number it starts failing so let's focus on hydrogen uh, atom now so what bohr's uh, third postulate uh, says is that whenever an atom de excites on de excite means where, whenever an atom jumps from energy e energy it jumps from state m or its energy is em in that state to some state which is n so its energy is en what happens is it emits electron in the process here i am assuming that m is greater than n so whenever m is greater than n em is greater than en and therefore when atom jumps from a higher energy state to a lower energy state it is it emits light and it emits light which is equal to h where h is planck's constant 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second and new is what is new here it is frequency of light let's call it light it is, okay let's call it electromagnetic waves or let me call it light so these are basically electromagnetic waves the light the storm light generally indicates that it is these are electromagnetic waves in visible range but i am using this term for all the electromagnetic waves for so, so that we have uh, abbreviated form for that electromagnetic waves so it is frequency of light emitted so whenever an atom de excites from higher energy state em to lower energy state en it emits a photon or it emits light and the frequency of that electromagnetic radiations is given by this relation h nu where h is planck's constant nu is the frequency of light now let's try to get a relation uh, let's first find out i can i erase this I, i'll erase this part okay because what we have to do from here is we have to obtain the relation for spectral lines we when we discuss spe hydrogen spectral lines we considered different series of hydrogen spectral lines uh, lyman series bamer paschen bracket and fern all these series wavelength in these series follow a particular relationship so what we want to do now is starting from this third postulate we want to derive that relationship which is obeyed by all the spectral lines of hydrogen atom so where should i start i will start with 
considering the left hand side i'll try to calculate em by en see what i am deriving now is i want to derive the relationship which is followed by all the spectral lines by all the hydrogen spectral lines by using third postulate so what should where should i start what should be the right hand side now by using third postulate by bohr's third postulate so that we can say that yes bohr's atomic model does gives us a relation uh, which which is uh, true for these spectral lines so where should i start was my question where remember atom is jumping from higher energy level to lower energy level and therefore m is greater than em is greater than n and therefore m is also greater than n just keep that in mind right so where should where should i start now em is equal to minus m now we are doing it for hydrogen atom and therefore for hydrogen atom right for hydrogen atom z is equal to 1 there is only one proton in the nucleus and therefore atomic number of hydrogen is equal to 1 so this is m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 m square by this is em then en is minus m e raised to 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n square by h square where this is en now what will happen is we have negative sign here we have negative sign here therefore they will become therefore they will be positive so let, and i get em Minus e n equal to. I'll take all the terms constant which I can take. M e to the power four divided by eight epsilon zero square h square into what I have is one by n square. Yes, because this term will become positive. Minus the next term is one minus m square. Oh, I reverse the relation. I wanted to write e n minus e n. Anyway, we'll go with that. so now we know from third postulate that the atom is de excited it is uh, going to lower energy state en by from a higher energy state em and that should be equal to in the process what it does is it emits an electromagnetic waves or and it has frequency which is given by this relation em minus en is equal to h nu so i'll now use this third postulate and plug that instead of em minus en so i get h nu which is equal to the right hand side m e to the power 4 8 epsilon 0 square h square divided by 1 by n square minus 1 by m square i'll one do one more thing what i'll do is instead of frequency i want to write this relation in terms of wavelength why because uh, the relation that we have is in terms of wavelength so i have to write this frequency in terms of wavelength and for that we can use this relation always keep this in mind just remember this product of wavelength and frequency is always equal to speed of the wave no matter which wave we are talking about it could be sound wave it could be uh, electromagnetic wave it can be a wave passing through a string it can be a wave two dimensional wave in Uh, in some membrane this relation is always obeyed the product of wavelength and frequency is always equal to speed of the wave in the medium and therefore this equation now can write by using this relation i can write nu as c by lambda and therefore this equation then will change to hc by lambda which was suggested by one of your classmates uh, to, uh, she suggested that let's do it right away Uh, that is what i have done i could have started from that point also but i uh, considered that after a couple of steps so even th with that uh, we would have arrived at the same point and this right hand side i won't change it is m e to the power 4 8 epsilon 0 square h square 1 minus n square minus 1 by 1 by m square and therefore if i let me write here in this box now so 1 by lambda i'll again rearrange this equation and write it as m e to the power 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square 
C into H cube. This is what I'll get. And then the, in the bracket, I have 1 minus N square minus 1 by M square. Now, it is same relation. Uh, same relation as that observed for spectral lines. What is the only difference? This whole term, we considered it as a constant, Rydberg's constant, and therefore I, I'll write that equation in, the, in that form. This is R into 1 minus N square minus 1 by 1 by N square minus 1 by M square. So we have successfully obtained this relation for spectral line of hydrogen by using uh, Bohr's atomic model then we derive this relation with r is equal to m e to the power 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square c into h cube. And we now have a relation for Rydberg constant. Bohr's atomic model we considered. So let's review. Uh, let's, let's first write down all the formula. Okay. Uh, who will now you have to help me. Let's let me first write down what are the possible values for radius of atomic orbital uh, as uh, derived from Bohr's atomic model. What is Rn? We derived relationship for energy of electron when it is present in its uh, nth state. What is it? Epsilon 0 square n square h. So this is radius in nth state. This is energy of electron in n state or let let me drop that term it is given now energy of atom in n state as long as for hydrogen atom then we derived by using uh, third postulate the relationship for spectral lines it is r into 1 minus n square minus 1 by m square where e n is greater than em so at the atom when de excites from higher energy state to lower energy state it emits a photon and frequency of the photon is given by en minus em equal to h nu now you can rearrange this equation the left right hand side that i have written use the relationship for en and em and arrive at this equation which i have written in box Right, with this R as the Rydberg constant, which is equal to M. What is it? Okay, so now let's quickly go through the drawbacks of uh, Bohr's atomic model. The first one is uh, the relative spectral intensities. What happens is if you observe spectrum of any atom, uh, even hydrogen for that matter, some of the spectral lines are more intense. They are brighter as compared to rest of the lines, which suggests that uh, in, in the light, when hydrogen atoms emit this uh, light, which forms the spectrum, some of the wavelengths are more in quantity as compared to rest of the wavelengths. So this is, this is therefore called as relative spectral intensities. Okay, so some wavelengths are present in more quantity as compared to other wavelengths. Their intensity is more. That particular electromagnetic wave with the frequency or with the wavelength has more intensity and that cannot be explained by Bohr's atomic model. It doesn't say anything about that. It doesn't say why should some of the spectral lines have more intensity than others. So it cannot explain this relative spectral intensity. And this is the first drawback. The second drawback is even when we consider when we consider a spectral line, this is a spectral line as if we uh, see it. But if we look at more closely, if we look at the spectrum at higher resolution, what we observe is that one spectral line is actually made up of two very fine spectral lines. Okay, two or even in some cases more than uh, two spectral lines. So this once this line may not be a single line, but it may be made up of multiple lines. But since they are closely spaced, when they are not observed from considerably good resolution, it looks like it is just a line. And that is called as fine structure of the spectrum. And this fine structure of the spectral lines cannot be explained by Bohr's atomic model. Because if it is one particular uh, free wavelength, then it is given by that particular line. Why should it be made up of smaller lines cannot be explained by Bohr's atomic model. It cannot say anything about that. So this was one more drawback, even when it comes to spectral lines of hydrogen. Rest, leave alone the other uh, heavier atoms. Okay. 
so this as i keep saying this bohr's atomic model is not the complete correct picture as we know that but it worked fine to some extent at least for hydrogen spectrum it explained hydrogen spectrum to a good extent but it is not without the drawbacks okay because it is not a complete uh, treatment for finding the hydrogen atom energies in hydrogen atom we cannot do it classically we need a full quantum treatment and and that we are not doing that bohr's atomic model since is not doing uh, there are these drawbacks then third drawback is even if some of the lines if we see a single line and if you place that atom in a uh, magnetic field or in electric field so suppose i put it in magnetic field what happens is this single spectral line it splits into two lines okay so there is one line only but when it when the atom is placed in magnetic field that that single spectral line splits into two spectral lines that effect is called as zeeman effect when it is in magnetic field similarly if you place the atom in strong electric field a single spectral line splits into multiple spectral lines that is called as stark effect when you place the atom in strong electric field this effect is observed very clearly with magnetic field stark effect is weak to observe you need very high electric field and high resolution so these are some of the drawbacks of bohr's atomic model it is not without the drawbacks now if you want to understand why is this fine structure there why do we have this zeeman effect why do we have stark stark effect to understand these effects you have to consider a full quantum mechanical quantum mechanical treatment for hydrogen atom which is beyond the scope of our course so as far as atomic models are considered we will stop here at bohr's atomic model and this is the summary we considered the postulate we considered the formulation explanation of original origin of spectral lines and then we considered the drawbacks